We did everything right until the final third And we spent pee in the window So I gotta talk about the cost incurred 100 mil on a right wing 200 on a transfer fee All that wealth and attack And we still can't win by a two goal lead What? We did everything right until the final third And we spent pee in a window So I gotta talk about the cost incurred 100 mil on a right wing 200 on a transfer fee All that wealth and attack And we still can't win by a two goal lead What? Yo, it's the OT99 Bantery where opinions are shared and smoke gets served. I'm joined today with the birthday boy, NK. He's turned another, he's aged another year. You can see the greys in his chin. Man like Edwin, he's here. Flyers ever look, we're here to talk about the game. The game, Manchester United versus, I was calling them Ammonia, uh, but it's Omania. That's the proper pronunciation. So, look, we're going to get it right today, Omania. Look, Manchester United made a meal out of this game once again. You get me? Just like the first leg. This one was even worse, though, because we left it right down virtually to the last kick, of the, almost to the last kick of the game before we got that win. And it was Scott McTominay that came off the bench to save the day. And he was the unlikely hero. I thought it would have been it's Ericsson creating something, Sancho even creating something. But it was it was man like Scott McTominay. So, guys, look. Look, how do you feel about this game? That where's your where's your head at in this game? What's your thoughts, man? Look, I ain't gonna lie, yeah. When when the game was going on, I was on the phone to you when they scored. Mm. You started to go mad. I just kept quiet because Man United, yeah, the, the, they played terrible. Like, <laughs> what was it? 34, 34 shots, thirteen on target. Like, come on, they. Sh when I say they played terrible, I mean they sh they shouldn't have left it to that to late like that. Because what happened if we had no stoppage time? Then what, what would have happened? Like, but yeah, yeah but like none in the first half. Look, at the end of the day, we got the three points, but like we can't be performing like that if we want to go further in competitions or even throughout the season. But NK, what can we say, man? NK, seventy ball possession, thirty three attempts on target, opposed as opposed to Armenia's four attempts. We had twelve shots on target out of the thirty three. They had one, and twelve shots of goal. They've had two shots of goal, nine block shots. They had one block shot. Look, watch when you hear those stats. What considering that Omenia, right? If they just looked up and got that pass, you know what I mean? Was it Bruno, whoever it is that you know? Yeah, he should have passed it for you. <laughs> what's your assessment? I don't, what do you think of when you hear those stats, man? Look, two things. First of all, we did we did we did we did our 70 million pass for Real Madrid. <laughs> 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 Bro, if McTominay is going to come on and be scoring goals, we don't need Casemiro, man. Uh, we need that. Guessing, Se Bro, second, yeah. Nah, nah, nah. Cassie was second, cold. No, second, yeah. We need to swap their Bruno for our Bruno. <laughs> 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 Something ain't right, man. But look, I don't know, man. Look, this, this, this team, yeah. With United, you just never know what to expect from this team. One... You got games where they become clinical. They, they, they don't create. They create like two chances and we score one. Mm. You got games where we create so we create so many chances and we don't want to score. And at times you have games that we just don't play well at all. You know, our team you, you, they like a British weather. You just don't know what you're gonna get on the day. You know, and today it was a bit like the Everton game where we gain the passes. We are passing the ball around, but when we get to that final third. It's like that to me. I feel like that's where the biggest problem is. You know, when we get to that area where that killer boy is gonna come, it's either one they 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 wait too long before they, they they make the killer pass, or they don't they don't make the killer pass, or two they rush it, or three they 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 want too long work out. I don't know, but something there. It, it, the players there, the wingers, the strikers, and the number ten, the connection just don't seem to be there. It's it just that they, they all just on different kind of like wavelength, you know. At times, you know, so one, one person will play the one two and they, they will not get the ball back, you know. At times, the long ball will go and then the player, uh, the striker will not make the run. So, I've, I don't know if because maybe it's early stage, so the chemistry is not there between them or whatever it is, but something just not right in that final third, man. Something just Bro, not right. You hit the nail in the head because it's just like if you look at our opposition now, you look at like in the Premier League, for example, you look at Arsenal. Arsenal's got like a good ten goals more than us, if I'm if I'm right. You know, um, City. I think the last time I checked was on thirty certain goals. Do you know what I mean? 
you look at Manchester United, we're aspiring to, to be, you know, it's hard to say, we're aspiring to play and be putting the ball in the net like these teams. And right about now, we've only got like 13, let me check, we've got like 13 goals or something like that. And Manchester United is conceding a lot these days as well, which is not helping. So it's just cancelling it out. And if we need to be scoring more goals, and go, it, in the first couple of games, we'll, you know, in the Premier League, I'm reverting it back to the Premier League, our defence was really good. We've started now kind of leaking goals, you know what I mean? And it, City just bamboozled our whole defence, giving us more to do in the final third. And we're not clinical. So that's a danger. It's a big issue. Do you know what I mean? We was getting a lot of one goals, one goals here, winning a game by one goal. And I think now, I think the last few games against Southampton, against, you know what I mean? Everton, it's one goal that we're winning the game by. That's not sustainable. All the games, bro. When Is it all the games? This season, my United have not taken a two-goal lead. We've never taken a two-goal lead. We were, we, we asked now, we went one, they made it one-one, and then we ended up winning three-one. I don't remember that this season we haven't gone a two a two nil lead. Edwin, check the stats. Yet. Check the stats, Edwin. Have we gone more than a two goal? I don't even know. <laughs> but do you know what it is? It's not sustainable. And I was I was thinking, what? Like we we've got some priorities. We've got some big big priorities to talk about. So obviously we know that we need a forward. It seems because Marshall's not fit. Rashford, I thought we had a decent game. The clinicalness is not there. The low. Oh, your volume's gone. Your volume's gone. Edwin. The low. No, sorry, I was saying his decision making was poor today as well. Like sometimes when he should have passed, he shot, and sometimes when he shouldn't have shot, like he passed. Like I don't know. Oh, Rashford. Know? Yeah. Yeah. There's so times I, where he could have passed it, but he always wants to cut in and try and bend it into the corner but then this is to see i don't even want to have this argument last time because last time we were talking about players being direct players not being direct it all come down to decision making man it, it come down to intelligent players no no one to want to do certain stuff you know and, and th- this has been rushford biggest problem anyway you know yesterday you could say is. like he missed the best chance today that one-on-one yeah you should bury yeah. that you should bury that that ball the other ones i could say okay you know what yeah, if you know the angles were not like the goalkeeper could save it, but that one on one, he should score that. And at times, too, he get a ball, he run, which some of the fans want, they want players to be running out players. But to me, there's no point running if it's not going to result into nothing. What is the point of running out players if you're going to be in a dead angle that you, you cannot either cross because it's on the left foot anyway? Or just go and just do minimal nah, stuff. Nah, 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 nah. I'm not, I'm, I have to defend Rash. I felt like Rash had a decent game. Too. I felt like Rash he was, was our bright, he was, he was our brightest spark. Man, um, I don't know what you were watching, man. Nah, he was like, nah. Dude, he was. His, okay, what? Okay, if there was so, anything okay, happening okay, okay. from the game. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. So, did he get an assist today? He didn't get an assist. No, no, wait. wait. Yes or no? Did no. he score today? No. And how many chances <laughs> did he have? <laughs> He had about four or five. And, and, but... and that's a good point because everything was going through Rashford today. The first time, yeah. everything was going through Rashford and, and Malaysia. But that's and my I point. Felt like the combination was good, but the end product was bad. But that's, yeah. this is what we could all agree on. And this is why I feel like we need a striker because the end product was good. But if we're looking at the, the team, we're talk, looking at the attackers, he was our brightest spark, even though the clinical, like everyone was dead in terms of the finishing today but he was our brightest spark and I just feel like like Man United's been suffering from this for a long time do you know what I mean and it's it's sad when you see guys like Gabriel Jesus Arsenal getting a free ride at these guys City bring getting that Alvaro what's his name that, that is it Alvaro Al- Fernandez Alvaro Fernandez bro getting him on a cheap and you're just looking at all these strikers you're looking at Harlan oh, sorry, sorry. I, 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 what's I, his I don't name know. I, yeah, I was talking about. I was talking. I thought you were talking about our left back, but no, 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 not, uh, oh, not they, the they, left they, back. They, they, What's they, the they, one that's striker? What's his name? I know it's a. F- I don't even know what his name is. Let me Alvarez, it isn't it? Is it? Oh, no, yes. Yeah, Al- is that is Alvarez? Is Alvarez? Sorry, yeah, Alvarez. Alvarez. Yeah. They're getting all these guys. I just look at Man United, thinking this is annoying. And then we've got that guy. I always go back to this guy that's suspended right about now. Just thinking, if only this guy was in this team, man. But he goes and do what he had to go and do. I don't even know if it's true or not, but it's just annoying, bro. Because we're in need of a clinical. Striker, look. What was your thoughts on Casemiro starting today, man? What's your thoughts on his performance? Because me personally, by the way, that 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 two nil, yeah. There's only one team that we've we've beat two nil though. Sheriff. Look at that. Come on, imagine. 
Just one oh, yeah, team. Yeah, we did beat Sheriff 2 0. Yeah, 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 you're right. One you're team right. that we've left. But, but, but look at the team, though. Like, technically, like, even today we struggled, but. But this Casemiro, is, you, I thought he played well today, though. It shows that no team has been a walk of the park. Like, no game. Like, we thought we felt anxious from start to end. It's either we're getting battered or we we're anxiously winning the games. And what does that remind you of? Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. This is what he does, bro. He wins the games and it's, you just feel anxious about it. You feel nervy at the edge of your seat. You're biting your, your nails, just trying to grind out the game. This is it. But anyway. But then, but then with, with, with that though, you know what? What, what I would say is that the patterns of plays are there. That, that, that's one thing. The patterns of plays are there. You, you just know how we're trying to build, how we're trying to create chances. I feel right now it's more to do with personnel in certain position. You move one or two players and you replace them there, those final ten decisions, yeah, it it changes. And, 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 and that's very encouraging because you say, okay, you know what? I see what they're trying to do. And if I was to go in there and replace certain players, yeah, it might be different. Whereas before, you couldn't see no pattern of play. You couldn't see what we're trying to do. So even if one one or two players come in, it was the same thing too. So that's what I, I, I got to say about that too. But though. look at it though. I can see the style of play. We play with six attackers um, on the ball, like six attackers, one DM, three centre-backs, all of that sort of stuff. Like we try to flood the box. Do what we do. Like you said, the patterns of play, the passing was sweet. But I look at this team, the opposition, and I'm just like, are we are we being enabled to play like this because the opposition is not up to, up to standard. They're up to scratch. Look, this ain't a team that's pressing us. This ain't a team that really, it didn't really give us any threat. So Man United is being allowed. Look, I looked at Man United and I felt like because of that, this team, Armenia, right? Because they weren't up to scratch, because they weren't, they weren't doing anything to us. Our tempo was slack. Lindelof will have, Lindelof here but on then, the but ball then, but then, was looking like Maguire, taking five the same against Everton. Five the same against Everton on Sunday. Yeah, and Everton's another team that's not in form and we're just making, like these teams what? make... Everton won four or five games on a row. That's yeah, true. Now you're right. It is. They, they weren't form. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I just, feel, I just feel like, yeah, you're all right. I just feel like when we're up against the big boys, Liverpool, Arsenal, we up our game. We, you could see the urgency. You can see the intensity. You can see that, like you know, the winningness, the press, and everything like that. We're up against lesser opposition. It's like that goes out the window and we relax. We're on cruise control. And my thing is just yeah. like when we're on cruise control, I'm not getting a, I'm not getting a, the, I'm not getting an accurate reading of whether Manchester United is progressing with our playing style when we're on cruise control because we're being allowed to do these things. I want to see us being able to do these things under pressure. Yeah, but I, you know what? With that being said, yeah, I just feel like this place are learning their manager system. So, what, yeah. what it is is like when they rush it, they tend to kind of like not be able to kind of like do it. So, at this moment in time, it has to be more on like a, a slow pace. And you know, a perfect example was that there was a preseason where you know that kind of like passing drill that they kind of like do, uh, which I saw like them do like in training and preseason. There was a clip that I saw where the Ajax players was doing it much more quicker compared to how the United players do it because obviously it's like new to them so they're still kind of like learning how the rhythm to, uh, uh, is. But one thing I've got to say is uh, today, even when it was a nil-nil, they still kind of like play how the managers want, wanted to play, you know? Building up patiently. Obviously, you want the intensity to come, come with it but they, they didn't result into kind of like the long balls or anything like that. They kind of like played it how they wanted to play it and then in the end, they go, they go from that. Stuff like that, build confidence, you know. It, it, it helped them to kind of like, okay, we need to believe in that. But in terms of like the urgency with the play, I think it's going to be something where we're going to have to change personnel, maybe as as the windows go by to kind of like get that. Because some of these players, they're just not comfortable playing that kind of like possession football, link up play. Some of them are just not comfortable. It's not, it's not their cup of tea, so they have to slow the game down for themselves. Mm. Edwin, what's yeah, your thoughts on that? What's your thoughts on it? And, and, and Casemiro as well, touching on that as well. Do you know what? Yeah, I feel like with the team, I said this to you, they get the ball and they take too many touches on the ball. Like too they'll many. take four or five touches, get the ball, look up, pass it. They take too much. Like there's, like you say, there's no urgency. There's no, I don't know, there's no fluency. There's no like sharpness. It's just like take a couple of touches, boom, 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 boom. You know what I mean? Like I feel like we hog on the ball. There's no. Like, we're too slow on the ball, overall. Like, mm. we're very passive in our play. We play, like, 
we've got we we're not chasing or we don't want to score like too many touches on the ball, not not enough tempo, like too passive. But it really is. The tempo's really slow. When I watch I watch these even, other teams even like Arsenal like it's whatever. Last minute, it's like, yeah. It's too when the urgency, the tempo of these of the passing of the movement is just on another level when I watch teams like Arsenal, City, even Liverpool at times, Man United is very slow mo, slow mo. It allows uh Omania to gather into their shape. It allows the opposition to be able to regather and get into position. Like Man United, I feel like when we try to put those combination passes together, it will break down at times. We might get one, two passes off, maybe max three. Then it'll break down because someone is not in sync with the other person. How many times did you see, uh, is it Shaw run over the ball, let it go past, or Bruno tr uh, run over the ball, let it go past, but the other person is not in sync. They don't know that that ball's com gonna come yeah. to them. And then it just ends up being a wasted, a wasted sort of little move. I feel like it's probably going to take time, a bit more understanding of each other's game. But I don't know. I just feel like the tempo thing can't be teached to these players, you know. It's what I mean, it's early days still, but I'm just worrying that, you know, can it can it be teached to these players is the right question. Can the urgency be instilled in these guys? You know what I mean? Or is it or is it just going to be like cruise I control? Think, well, I think I think it, 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 it has to be on cruise, cruise control with uh, a lot of these players, for example, you know, like Bruno, in terms of like the whole passing position, that's not what he's used to, you know, he's used to like hitting the ball, wolfing the ball and stuff like that. So with him and as a number 10, he, the thing is to me, when you talk about tempo, it's about who controls the tempo. In games, most of the time, your, our centre backs, which are actually actually a problem, they actually move the ball quicker. You know, Martinez and uh, what do you call it, Lindelof, they move the ball quicker. But when they get to that final third, you know, so you speak about your uh, what do you call it, your your, your Bruno's uh, today, your, your Fred. At times, you know, they kind of like control the, the tempo. And even Ronaldo too, that's kind of like that too. Can when you go into the final third, can you do that combination play quickly? You know, bam, bam, bam. The one twos can it be more quicker? And, and, and that's where I just have that kind of like, I don't know. I just feel like you have to change kind of like personnel, you know, in order to kind of like get those kind of like combinations. Some players are just not used to playing that quick one, two, quicker and everything. To me, that's my opinion anyways, you know. I feel and like it's a more personal thing. How about the final ball into the box though? Because you saw low whipping crosses again. It weren't on the plate certain times. You saw, is it Sancho or Malaysia drilling passes and... I remember Ronaldo trying to take a ball that he was he was is crossed to him. He had to try to adjust his body, but there was so much pace. But then on the ball. We, 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 the best it cross, sky high. The best cross though, we, 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 we can talk about that. Was that it Fred? To Fred and Fred missed that. Yeah. And, and last week too, last yeah. week too to Casemiro and Casemiro also missed that too. That so we can talk about some of yeah. the balls not getting there, but when the ball actually gets into the boxes too. They are no fine ones, too. Yeah. yeah, as even so, but one of the board that I don't know who put it inside. I don't know if it was Ericsson or one of the wingers to watch for should have jumped. He just literally stood there. Look, mm. we can talk about that all you want. The players are just not good in the air, too. So, yes, the crosses might be bad, but when the good crosses come in too, they're not they're just making not doing enough. Yeah, yeah, they're just not doing enough too. So it is what it is, man. Look, the important thing is today we, we, we got a three points. We're trying to get to the top of the group, but you watch it and you just feel like, you know, hopefully, hopefully, we make up out of, out of the group nicely. And then by the time that the knockout phases start with January, either one, these players actually know how to play with intensity because in the knockout phases, this kind of like stuff, you, you, cannot, you cannot do that. You cannot have like about 20 shots and hardly scoring a goal. You get punished for that. You know, teams will punish you for that. So that's something we need to work on. And hopefully, by the time we get to the, the big boy stages, uh, we improve because Thursday night is going to be it's, it's about to be the new Champions League night because all the everyone want to play with us Barcelona to play with us. Juve look Juve want to come there <laughs> Barcelona want to come here you know all them boys want to come here man they all want to come they all want to come Ajax want to come here it's, it's going to be late on Thursday <laughs> night man <laughs> bro it's so, wait, crazy what, okay what did you think about Casemiro today you know what I have to watch the game back again because normally when I watch it, especially with, with certain positions here, I have to pay attention to them, you know. Casemiro role is very complicated and when we talk about tempo, the role in which he play now requires him to be the guy that said the tempo because he has to be a playmaker in, in Tim Hag's system, player six. 
I don't remember him kind of like having a lot of the ball to actually kind of like make the passes. Or he, I, mean, he made, didn't he really made, de- I remember two clinical distinct passes, but you always I, remember bro. you always remember the, the good stuff that you the players you like do, <laughs> and you remember the bad stuff that the players you don't like do. And and, and that's a problem. But, nah, nah, nah. Casemiro was Casemiro, yeah, yeah, we think, need I ain't gonna lie, but in, in a game in a game when you have about seventy percent ball possession, mm. you, you cannot you, you have to look at him and say like what did he do when he had a ball? Was he controlling the tempo? Because if you want to talk about tempo those guys normally get on the ball a lot. Your number six get on the ball a lot. So you have to ask yourself, like, did he control the tempo by distributing the ball quicker or literally even making those kind of, like, passes too? So I need to watch that back a to kind of, like, analyze that, just like that part of this game too. And yeah. they didn't really have that much counter for him to be breaking that play anyways. I think, I think we controlled that midfield pretty well. And I think Casemiro, like, he always looks for the forward pass, which is what I like about him. Always looks... Even if it is just, you know, a yard in front of him. He's, he's never trying to do that whole back passing thing too often. Always a full pass. And he made some clinical passes as well. Like, he made a one a long overhead one. Bro, he hit, I remember him not tracking back. Bro, <laughs> bro this guy hit like a 20. Back. I swear to you, he hit like a 20, 30 yard pass. Yeah, it was smooth, bro. Like, I'm just like, these men like Scott McTominay or Fred, they ain't doing that for a start. And the thing about Casemiro, I think he, he adds a, that mixture of what you want. You want a guy... That is a brute that can win the ball, win back possession, even when he makes mistakes, because he is making mistakes. But he's also got that passing range in him. And I feel like we lacked it with Fred and Scott McTominay because it was always about physicality and not about that clinical passing. Do you know what I mean? And that's what I like about Martinez, because Martinez is a brute as well, but he can also pass the ball. He's got that he's got that creativity in him a little bit. So look. Edwin, what do you think of Casemiro? Because I heard you say he done well. You want to big him up today, right? No, nah, do you know what? Do you know what it is? It's not that I want to big him up, but there was a big improvement from the last game in terms of he's not giving away the ball because he was okay. doing what he done normally. Do you know that like nipping the ball away, like you say? But he still needs to learn how to track back properly, and I think sometimes he pushes forward a bit too far up. But then that, that's the manager asking him to do that, though. Oh, okay, cool. What I would that's say, the manager asking him to do that. What I would say I about thought, Casemiro, I thought his passing was much better today. Like he didn't. But then he didn't the get pressure well. too. Them, them, yeah, them guys were not pressing us like I ever seen. With with True. Casemiro, the thing I notice about him is he's, his reaction speed at times is a bit not his react. He, he's a ball winner, but it's just like his pivot. The time he takes to it's like he's, he's on ice sometimes. Like if you if you've got pace, Casemiro will struggle. Like I just feel like keeping up with a tempo is 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 something that he's still adjusting to in the, in this Premier League. Do you know what I mean? His positioning is really good. He'll win back yeah, that ball. Position is very good too. But and what do you guys make of Fred today? I was surprised. He, I was personally, I was surprised he said ahead of McTominay today. I was very surprised. And then we, we when he came on to, did did he give us the energy that we so much require from from the team? Because I mean, clearly talking about we didn't have a tempo. That means Freddie didn't set up the tempo, and he missed a very big sitter, man. Did he do enough for you with the Fred Casemiro combination, bro? I, what I did see is Fred doing what he does. He's got legs in him. He chases that ball. He runs back, he runs forward, runs all over the pitch. But Fred was one of those ones today that didn't have a stand-up performance, clearly. He didn't do... We're not sitting there saying, oh, he really saved us in midfield because we had nothing to do in midfield. We weren't getting pressed. So, therefore, you're looking at what he's doing offensively. Like, what is he contributing to the offensive play? You just said he missed... Like, he missed one of our best chances. He's not... He wasn't doing any of that creativity thing. Look, Fred should have been in that position where he can go forward more, have that freedom, like... We weren't getting pressure. Casemiro was holding it down. Go forward. Let us show what you can do offensively. And that's the one thing I liked about Fred. I wanted him to use his pressing, his energy positively in an attacking sense. I didn't really get that from him. I didn't really get that from him. I know Fred has got a pass to him as well. And Fred, you know, I know people may laugh at that, but he has got a pass to him. And he didn't show me anything today, man. So it's just a wasted cameo. Scott McTominay came on and showed, man, why he's a starter. You get me? Came on, man of the match performance in five minutes, bro. Five minutes. Bro, he, 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 he shot the goalkeeper save a good shot from him. And then he, he he was in the box to score the winner, man. That's what well, it is. That's 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 what it is too. But also one thing I pointed about the game, you know, I mean Bruno is always a hot topic that we, we, we talk about a lot. And I don't know if I mentioned the last stream because I don't know. I just I just feel like 
this there's something about him that is missing that in a in, in like a season or two he will get replaced. And today too, it's very interesting where when we made a start, when Sancho came on the pitch, Bruno went to go play in the on the right hand side, and Rashford was playing as a number ten. And to me, that's very strange to kind of like do that, you know, because we talk about him being a 10, being a creative guy. Why is the manager always keep on pushing him from that position to a different position anytime the sub comes on? You know, it, it made me wonder, does he really fancy him playing at the... Is he playing the 10 role the way the manager want him to play? Because today, that's very strange. Why, why Rashford playing as a 10 and Bruno go on the right-hand side? That was strange. Sancho could have gone on the right-hand side and Rashford could have stayed there. But he said, "Look, you go play on the right hand side." That was that was that well, was strange for me for him to do that. I don't I don't I don't understand. I just need to just we need Rashford centrally in it because Ronaldo's still getting his, he's still getting his fitness up, bro. Yeah, I, 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 I will I would love to obviously maybe listen to the press conference after to kind of like listen to why he kind of like done that because Bruno as a ten and and this is not the first time it happened. Anytime we make a sub. He always get moved from the number ten position. So the question is, and maybe this is probably going to be a conversation for a different day as we continue to watch more position. Is he not playing the ten position right? Because if he is, why you keep on moving him from that position anytime you make a sub? You know. But I, I feel know, like today, I feel like Bruno's. Yeah. Imp- I feel like he's calmed down a lot. I still feel like his composure still needs a lot more work. I don't feel like he's the man of the show every single week, which is a, a clear sign that you know whatever Ten Hag's doing and, and said to him is mellowed him down. You know, he's not trying to be the superhero. He's trying to be more of a team player. But his composure and his final third decision-making is always just crazy. And that is something that is the important thing that needs to be fixed. Ericsson's got that final third. He's been sluggish the last couple of games. Like, the, the decision-making. Bruno's one is just here or there. But what I do like about Bruno is his energy that he brings he brings a lot of energy to the game so uh, there's a lot of off the ball stuff that he does for this Manchester United team and when we're talking about our midfield how we need legs how we need legs look Bruno's someone that's given us the, like we don't see it typically because we're focusing on that pass that he put wide or you know what I mean or that shot that he blasted over the bar because of his, his lack of composure but, 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 but the but energy you know, wasting that leg pre- doing, doing, doing pressing higher the pitch that we don't need him to do Doing that, but I saw him me, doing a me, lot of me, chasing. Not, my, what, yeah, me, why not? I think like, and you're right. He 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 come down on those kind of like hero balls or the Bruno balls that we, we call him for. I think he's come down on that. I think to me, right now, my biggest concern with him right now is that link up play, especially when we don't have like a a target man up from. Ronaldo cannot do that link up play as a striker. He, he cannot do that, and if our number ten cannot do that too. I feel like that's a big problem because it means that our wingers don't really have no one to like play that kind of like combination pass so that they can run in behind, you know. And that's a big concern because we're not Martial can do that, but obviously he, yeah. he got his injury problem, so he cannot do that. So you go Ronaldo that cannot do that, and if you go Bruno that cannot do that, the question is, are our wingers ever gonna be in games like that all the time, or is it gonna be one of those ones where? Everything I don't know because we need to u- utilize our wingers sometimes too. But I don't oh. know with those two like that. I've said it, man. Eric's um, Anthony, the man just need to do more, man. They need, they really do. Need to, they need to do more. They really do because they've got the ability. If you're not blowing past players in um, Omenia, it's just long. It's long. But Edwin, what I wanted to ask you though is like we we hardly do this whole two DM thing. We've been doing the whole Bruno Eriksson thing and then, you know, as Scott McTominay or of late Casemiro. What was your thoughts of like, you know, we wanted to see our midfield get a bit more like bite in it. So we, we've got Fred there now of Casemiro um, and then we had Bruno as a lone number 10. Um, what was your thoughts on that midfield? Did it bring any difference to, did you see anything uh, better or would you just go back no, to Eriksson and Bruno? I feel like it just shows that, you know, because we created a lot of chances, mind you, just with Bruno Fred, and two. I, of them. I just, I just feel like it could work, but Fred's not, Fred's not an option, like a viable option. Maybe when we need like to come on or players are injured, but he shouldn't. Like it just showed that he can't be starting. Like there's no real balance. It does. It's not that he played really, really bad. It just doesn't do anything, any different, or improve our team in any way. Mm. Um, as NK said, I'm surprised Matt Tomley didn't play, play. Not for the fact that. 
he, he's like the best player, but it's just that he's not playing during the weekend, is he? He's in, he's suspended. So I would have thought, okay, if you're gonna, if you know you want to play um, Casemiro, rest him, bring him on if you need to, or maybe try something a bit different. But I, I personally, as I said, I, I would have liked to see Bruno bench this game and just give a chance to maybe play Ericsson more up and see how he does, mm. or even play Sancho behind them. But mm. I think I think he's got his midfield that he probably wants. Maybe Casemiro, Ericsson, and with Bruno in front of them. But I just don't. I, I could tell like. But you know it's hard to say because NK made a good point. We weren't the, the midfield wasn't pressured, so it's not like they were under any pressure to play any way. They had the time to play the game they wanted to play. So maybe if we played that midfield with a, a better team, we probably would have, as we saw against Man City, got exposed. But I think they didn't really have they weren't under pressure too much this game, you know what I mean, to show any faults. But I think the strongest midfield is probably gonna have Ericsson in it. Who was your man of the match? Oh. Oh, go on, okay. No, I say I would I would have I would love to know how many of our chance questions actually came through the middle. Like through like middle passing through like through them. I would love to know, man, but hopefully when I watch it back again, I could I could find out. A lot from the wide areas. Yeah? A lot from the wide areas for sure. Mm-hmm. Edwin, who's your man of the match? Um uh, for for the game today. Nah, for the game yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> this is how peak it is, you know. Oh, man's yeah. actually said for the game today. You know? <laughs> What's his name? Yuzuho, man. Black History Month, man. The Nigeria goalkeeper for the other team. <laughs> All right. But I'm uh, joking. You know what? Really worked, shout, you know? What, what was you know, that shout, about, man? Shout, shout him out, though. He had a good game, that goalkeeper. But um, for our team, um, I don't know, you know. Like, because no one really stood out. So, like, it's like, do I give it to Matt Tomley for scoring a winning goal? Because no one had like a standout performance. You know, He's my man of the match, Rashford Scott Matt Tomley. He did the I most important thing. So definitely my man yeah. of the match. I don't know. You'd probably go to him because he scored a winning goal. Because if Rashford had scored, maybe him. Because he had like, he was, like NK said, everything was going through him. But no one really had a good game, man. Like overall. So it probably goes to Matt Tom for the goal. He was yours, NK. Uh, is a, a guy. Seconds. Is a guy. Is a guy. Nobody has said nothing about. But yeah. last year, man, my last year, man, man of the match day, because after the, the last two games which he had, I think today he was very positive. Everything came from the left hand side. The mm. combination between him and Rush for the air was mm. very good. One two, winning the ball back, putting in like some some okay crosses in the box to which uh, you know what. I was very surprised Tim Hakutu came up. I'm going to call Tim Hakutu tonight and ask him why, man. Like, why you get <laughs> the guy of when he was playing so good? I don't get it, man. Like, no, what did you know what? Sh- what did Sean do when unless, he came I, up? Unless he's resting him for the weekend game. Because remember, we've got, we've got Newcastle and Tottenham straight on the back of that. Yeah, I think I think he come back to, into the team, man. I, I think he, he needs to start. Because what's Luke Shaw doing, man? Look, last year for one of the match, man. Like a lot of show business, man. What's your doing? But do you know what? I, 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 th- I think he played much better, but I would like to see him attack a bit more. Like get down the wing, put in some more crosses. You know what I mean? Look, but this I, is... again, some, 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 the role that they require, like oh, he yeah, played that like, intervention role. So sometimes he has to be more like in the middle, babe. But today, him and Rashford, I was surprised by their combination play between them. The understanding was there today, you know, because preseason it was a bit off. I remember preseason it was a bit off there, but. Yeah, man, that's mine. Uh, what, Fred? Yeah, okay, cool. OT99 cool. Banner Room. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. Peace. Peace.